exactly do you see space technology playing a central role in climate change? Well, the fact is, is that we wouldn't know about climate change if it weren't for satellites. And so um, what we tried to do in this report was really to show the foundational role that space technologies and satellite data plays um, in climate markets and in, in enabling climate markets. And so, you know, half of all the essential climate variables that we're tracking come from space and 99% of weather forecasts um, uh, and weather data comes from space. So it is front and center and right in the middle of this um, conversation. So, you know, how much of this tech, you know, one of the criticisms of space is that, you know, the exploration, the, the, you know, the real world um, impacts of space so far out there. How many of these technologies are ready now? How many of this, these technologies are in their infancy and going to take years to play out? Well, I mean, it feels in one sense that we've been gathering this data for decades um, and it's come from early NASA missions. And so we're sitting on a pile of data, but we're really... Um, and this is what came out of the report today, is we're starting to feel the impacts. I mean, you don't have to be a climate scientist or anything, um, you know, an expert to understand what's happening. You just have to look out your window um, and watch the news and, and see the impacts affecting our daily lives and, and, and affecting businesses. So we have solutions that are in place. There are big gaps in the data. Um, we need more sensors in space. That's a lot of what we're funding right now is to f help fill in those data gaps. Um, to enable the climate markets to have measurable data that can um, that that then products can be built on top of, and so um, all throughout the, the the life cycle and and the the, the flywheel of climate um, markets is really what we focused on in this report: the opportunity for investors. Now, Jeff Bezos recently went on an 11-minute trip to space with Blue Origin, and you helped us narrate that coverage so well, Chad. Thank you. We were the first to interview him on the ground, and I asked him about the skeptics and the critics out there who say, why are you investing in space when your money, your time, could be better solved helping us on Earth? Take a listen to his response to that. What we're doing is we're building infrastructure. This is a road. We're building a road to space so that future generations can build the future. We live on this beautiful planet. It's the most beautiful planet in the solar system by far. And we have to keep it safe and protect it. And the way to do that is slowly over decades to move all heavy industry, all polluting industry out into space. That's what we're gonna do so we can keep this planet the gym that it is. Chad, do you think Bezos's idea is A, realistic, B, the real solution, moving industry to space? Well, this is really long term and there is, um, it's a goal to work towards, certainly. Um, I like this idea of zoning Earth residential. There's already talk of moving heavy industry off planet. Um, there's, uh, the, the space economy today is made up mostly of geospatial intelligence, GPS, and communications. 95% of the market is in those things right now, and that's the data from satellites and what we've been talking about. But the thing that I think we're really, we haven't wrapped our head around yet is how fundamental Starship is going to change how we interact with space and how accessible it's going to be when that vehicle comes online. Um, the ability to launch 100 tons to um, orbit, refuel, and go to further destinations. Um, this is going to open up all types of applications that we haven't seen uh, that weren't feasible previously. And there's a $100 million um, uh, gift that was given to explore uh, solar power generation from space. Um, and that's one effort, and there's many others similar uh, to that that are happening around the world. So speaking of satellites, SpaceX just made their first acquisition in 19 years, acquiring Swarm Technologies. They've got Starlink, Amazon has Kuiper, there's Planet Labs, all of these different uh, satellite companies competing to be the eyes and ears of the world. Do you see consolidation in this space? Who wins? Well, SpaceX is certainly the apex player. Um, there's a number of others that are talking about doing things. Um, SpaceX is the company that is, is taking us consistently and regularly to orbit, um, whether it be satellites um, for climate um, uh, companies or for, for other applications. Um, but other than them and Rocket Lab, those are the two commercial companies that are taking us to orbit. So, um, you know, they've certainly got, they've certainly got a head start um, and, and are the ones to watch. So what companies are you betting on right now if invest, you know, there's money to be lost, obviously, if we don't invest in protecting the earth. There's also money to be made if you invest in the right companies. 
what companies are you putting your bets on now um, where you think that this is actually going to turn a profit? Well, sticking to climate, we're seeing a lot more companies and founders use these um, new tools and access the space in ways um, to develop really interesting technologies. And so um, one of the companies that we've invested in is GHGSAT, and they're the only, first and only company that's able to track facility level emissions um, from space. So just in Q2, I think they tracked and identified 150 megatons of carbon emissions. So this is a really interesting capability. Um, partners up really nicely with MethaneSat. It's an initiative by the Environmental Defense Fund. Those two things are going to work really closely together to give us a full solution. Um, but on the market side, I mean, the, the most important thing that's happening on the climate side is really around markets and getting this measurable, um, uh, accountable data. And so um, there's other companies that are, that are building the, the solutions that are, you know, the applications that are built on top of these data sets. And we're looking to invest um, in, in this surge in, in investment interest. Um, $50 billion is expected to be invested this year into the category. And so we're, look, we're looking at okay. this very closely.